Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free premium sports picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me just congratulate LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Let me just say, and it needs to be said, that the day LeBron signed to play with the Miami Heat, the value of the Heat jumped by nine figures, probably at least a hundred million dollars. More money than LeBron received from the Heat over the last four years. So it's a bit astonishing to me, given that the Heat made four consecutive NBA Finals, that Mickey Aronson and Heat ownership weren't willing to break the cap, go over the cap, to keep together a team that was championship level. Right? Keep in mind, what happened with the Clippers, the purported sale of the Clippers to Steve Ballmer for $2 billion, put hundreds of millions of dollars in Mickey Aronson's pockets, right? The value of his team literally jumped by nine figures on the Clipper news, right? So the point is simply this, and Jason Whitlock has written about it eloquently for ESPN. How could the Miami Heat expect the players to take less money when the team owner wasn't willing to make the same sacrifice to put a championship team on the court. I think LeBron made the wise decision leaving Miami. I think you need to be with an ownership group that has vision. And whatever we think about Dan Gilbert, just understand that Dan Gilbert right now is buying up blocks of real estate in inner city Detroit. Right? He's a visionary, he's a contrarian, he's a guy who's willing to invest where no one else is willing to invest. <coughs> he's an outside-the-box thinker. He's the kind of owner who, whatever the past mistakes he's made, that letter years ago was terrible. But whatever past mistakes he's made, he's a man who's willing to own up to it and who's willing to move forward so is LeBron James. I think that peering could yield big results in Cleveland. All of that said, you know, to me, all of these offseason moves just means one thing in the long run for this gambler. And that's that I have to get more money on the San Antonio Spurs in the futures market now that they've re-signed Patty Mills, Boris Diaw, Greg Popovich, and of course, Tim Duncan is coming back. Let's talk about Arislandi Lara for the gamblers. Understand, I believe that Lara has already been in the ring with better than Canelo. <clears throat> right? I consider Carlos Molina to be a better fighter than Canelo. Right? I question whether Canelo has been in the ring with better than Arislandi Lara. Right? To the Floyd Mayweather people, let me just say, Floyd weighs about 150 pounds. I want you to keep track of the weights on fight night in this fight. Lara moves well, boxes well. It's probably going to come into the ring weighing close to 168 pounds. Right? I thought Canelo got hit flush several times in that Mayweather fight. If he gets hit like that from Arislandi Lara, there is the chance that he gets stopped. The bet I like, and Vegas disagrees with me on both parts of the play. So proceed with caution. This is only for high-risk gamblers. But the bet I like, the hedge I like, is Saul Alvarez to win, not Saul Alvarez, Erislandi Lara, to win the fight at plus 150. Right, bet 100, win 150 in profit, and get your 100 back. Hedged with Saul Alvarez by KO at a plus 250. You heard right, plus 250. 
Now let's break the numbers down even more. I'm only using the hedge here for insurance. I don't even want to profit off the hedge. So the distribution I'm throwing out here is for every hundred dollars on Arislandi Lara, I'm going to bet forty dollars on Saul Alvarez by KO. Why? Because if Saul Alvarez gets the KO, I break even. 40 times 2.5 gives me 100. Exactly the outlay that I'm doing on Arislandi Lara to win the fight. So, the way it breaks down, because keep in mind, for that 100, if I hit on the 100 part of the play on Lara to win, I win 150 in profit. Right? Minus the 40. I'd be betting on Canelo to win by knockout. So for every 100 plus $40, right? The 100 I bet on Lara. The $40 I bet on Canelo by KO. For every $140 that I bet, I have a chance to win $110 in profit. Right? Let's say Laura wins. I get back 150 minus the 40 that I've bet on Canelo by KO. That's the way I'm playing it. Let's be blunt here about the favorite in this fight. I don't believe Saul Alvarez has the boxing skills to beat Eris Landy Laura. Right? Understand, this is the rough neighborhood part of the internet. If we're talking about betting money on sporting events, then I've got to be as blunt as possible. I consider the underdog, Eris Landy Lara, to be the better boxer. Right? So, I believe Saul Alvarez's only chance of winning the fight is by KO. So, as I said, for every hundred bet on Lara to win at a plus 150, I'm betting $40 just for insurance purposes on Canelo by KO. But understand the risk involved, right? This is gambling, right? This is what has built casinos, the transfer from gamblers to the casino. Understand the risk involved. If Saul Alvarez wins the fight by decision, you lose it all. You lose the 100 on Laura simply to win. You also lose the 40 on Canelo to win by knockout. Right? If Canelo wins by decision, you lose it all. I don't believe he can. That's how I see this event. Let me know how you see it. Right? I'm talking about odds that are online and I'm using this site just for odds purposes. In fact, do your own homework on what where's offering what odds. The odds I've seen are Eris Landy Lara to win plus 150. Saul Alvarez by KO plus 250. Let me just say this too. If Las Vegas really believes that Saul Alvarez is going to have that hard a time knocking out Eris Landy Lauer. Then how is he a favorite in the fight? I think the markets are off here. We like to say the casino has mispriced the play. I think the entire market is off because I think fans are misvaluing Canelo. I think Canelo is a talented fighter. I think he's an icon in the sport. I just think Laura is better. Right? I like Laura to win at plus 150, hedge with Canelo by KO at plus 250. Let me also say this too. Take a look at the Ronald Hearns Eroslandi Laura fight. 
you're going to see Ronald Hearns gets dropped and knocked out in the first round of that fight. Take a look at Paul Williams at the end of his fight against Arislandi Lara. You're going to see Paul Williams was beaten up in that fight. Beaten up. Take a look at Alfredo Angulo's eye at the end of their fight. Understand, Angulo's a warrior. He quits in that fight. That eye is the size of really a small baseball. Right? Lara was hitting it with regularity. Then what I want you to do is to look at a couple of fights. The beginning of Saul Alvarez's fight against Miguel Cotto's brother where Saul Alvarez gets hit and almost dropped in that first round. Right? Take a look also at the Alfonso Gomez, Saul Alvarez, beginning of that fight where Canelo gets outboxed. Right? My point to you is Canelo just doesn't have the hand speed. I know I'm going to get a lot of thumbs down here. Okay. Okay. But Canelo doesn't have the hand speed, nor does he have the lateral movement to keep up with Lara. You know how I see this fight. Share with the world here on YouTube in the comment section to this video how you see the fight. I think the odds are favorable here. I like Everslandy Lara to win plus 150 hedged with Canelo by KO at plus 250 the way I'm breaking it down is a hundred on Lara to win. For every hundred, forty on Canelo by KO. Right? If Canelo gets the KO, I break even, I'll live for another day. If Canelo loses, whether by KO or by decision, then it'll be more beer for us. Let me know how you see the fight. Thanks for stopping by.